This is the 3D printed huge brushless motor with Hallback array configuration. This is actually a design from another YouTuber called Christoph Lamer, and he has a lot of other designs. If you want this design or many others, check the link for his website and YouTube channel below this video. And I also recommend you to subscribe, because he is a great designer. Anyway, what I will do in this video is just to mount this design. I will show you the process that I have to follow in order to make it to work and I will use this design to explain how a brushless motor works but in a future video. The configurations for the wiring that we have and what is the hubback array configuration. Thanks to Christoph Lamer for this awesome design, so go and see his channel for more explanations, tests, calibrations and much more. This will be my own experience mounting this 3D printed brushless motor, so I will hope that you will learn something new, just as I did while making this video. By the way, I'm planning to make my own design in the future, so stay tuned for that. And also, the next 3D printed plane design is almost complete, but lately I don't have enough time to finish these projects, but stay tuned. So let's see how to print this, the parts that we need to build it, such as the magnets, the wire, the bearings and so on, see how to mount it and make some tests and learn something on the way. Another huge thank you to Christoph Lamer for designing this motor. Make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting my work. So let's get started. Hey guys, before we start, let me talk about the sponsor of this video. If you need electronic components, you must go to LCSC. They have more than 200,000 components of all kinds. They have basic resistors, capacitors of course, and also basic ICs, microcontrollers, power management and much more. And as you can see on their website, they can ship worldwide, so don't worry about that. And it's even more, the price for the component will get lower and lower depending on the amount that you want to buy. So for example, this STM32 is only 90 cents, but if you order 30 for example, the price will be 65 cents. And another cool thing about LCSC is that it's directly connected with Easy EVA, so you can add to the cart your components while designing your PCB. So go to LCSC, place the order and receive the components very fast. What's up my friends, welcome back. We start with all the parts that we need to mount this motor. You have a full part list on Christoph Lamer channel and links below for that. We start with the printed parts. So go to make CA website and download the parts. We have two main files for the motor outer part. These parts have a thread so they can be screwed together, so that's a pretty nice design. They also have some holes so the air can flow and cool down the winding inside, because under much power this will get quite hot. The small part has a space for a 62mm bearing. And the big outer part has spaces for magnets inside, but more about this later. The next two files are the core parts, core part A and B. We will join these together and create the core of the motor. It's recommended to print this with magnetic PLA material, but in my case I didn't have that kind of filament, so I've made it with PETG. That will lower the efficiency, but anyway. The next parts are two stator mounts. When these parts are joined together, it will create the mount for the core and keep it well in place. On one side of this we have a space for a small 60mm bearing. But on the other side we have once again a small bearing, but also the big bearing of 62mm. In this way the motor is held in place on both sides. With a big motor like this one, the back bearing is necessary, otherwise it will vibrate a lot and probably not even work. Ok, the final part is the front collar, and on this part we could mount a propeller or anything else. This part has a space for a metal collar with a screw and that will be fixed on a smooth rod. But we will see that later. So that's it for the 3D printed parts. Ok, now next we have the magnets. For the Hallback array we need 18 big magnets of 9x39mm. But we also need 36 smaller magnets. 
and of course to create the coils we will need some enamel copper wire. In this case this is a 0.45mm diameter and we need around 30 meters of wire for each face, so a total of more than 90 meters of wire. As we have seen before we need two small bearings of 16mm and one big bearing of 62mm. To make the shaft of the motor we will use an 8mm diameter smooth rod. I have mine from an old 3D printer that I don't use anymore. The shaft colors are 13mm outer diameter and 8mm inner diameter and they have a small screw so they can be fixed in place on the smooth rods. To fix in place the motor we need 4 pieces of M4 threaded rods, around 85mm long and some M4 nuts as well. We will also use some shrinking tubes, bullet connectors and some more insulated wires, so have those as well. Ok so in my case all the parts are printed with PETG, so they could handle more stress. But the core should be printed using magnetic PLA, but I don't have that. Check the full guide on Christoph Lamer website, links are below. Ok so first we mount the motor and then we will give it a test. So we start by preparing all the plastic parts. You might need to use a drill press to adjust the hole diameter. In my case the shaft diameter has the perfect size, so no adjustment is needed. But the holes for the 4mm threaded rods are very small, so I had to enlarge them a bit. Ok so now I fit a small bearing on the top and bottom parts of the core support. Then I cut 4 pieces of 85mm long of the M4 threaded rod. Place an M4 nut at the end and pass that through the small core support and also make sure that the nuts are flat and not getting out of the 3D printed part. I place a few layers of captain tape on the big core support, so the big bearing will fit perfectly. Only do this step if needed. Ok now we need to prepare the wire. For each coil the wire must be around 5 meter long. But not just that, each wire will have 6 turns, so a total of around 30 meters. So first we tie one end of the copper wire. Then we give it 6 turns of 5 meters. When we have that we cut the wire and wind it a little bit so it won't be too loose. Then I've printed these plastic spools so use one of these and roll the prepare wire on it. You will have to do this 3 times, so you will end up with 3 plastic spools each with 5 meters of wire of 6 turns. Ok now get the core parts and the stator support. Join the core parts together and align the coils, and then place the stator support in between. Check the alignment and when everything is ok we place some painters tape on the core so it will stay fixed in place because next we will wind the copper wire. Now take out the stator support and you will be left only with the core. On Christoph Lamer website you will have more indications about winding, so let's start and have in mind that this is the tricky part of the project. We start with phase A. Remove just a small portion of the painter's tape so we could begin. Take one spool of wire and place the start of that wire through one of the slots on the core and fix it in place for now with some tape. The two heads of the plastic core will give you the direction of winding as you can see. So now we skip two slots and wind back the wire. We do this 4 times for each coil. Make sure that the wire is tight and that it won't get out of the slots. You can push it a bit but only using plastic or wood tools, otherwise you might damage the wire and remove the insulation. So the first coil of phase A is complete. Place the spool of wire inside of the core, so we could keep going with the next phase. Now take the other spool of wire. We jump two slots to the left and start winding in the same way the first coil of the phase B. Once again we make 4 loops and this coil is ready too. Now place the spool of wire of phase B inside of the core as well. Now we get the spool for phase C and we do the same, but with only one slot offset. Now we have the first coils for each of the phase A, B and C, but there are still 8 more coils to go for each phase, because the motor has a total of 27 coils. So that's why this is the tricky part. There is a lot of work and the coils must be well winded, otherwise the wire could get loose, touch the outer part of the walls, get damaged and so on. The last coil is a bit tricky to finish. 
that's because the other coils are on top of the slots. So you will have to wind the last wire beneath the other coils. As you can see, there is a small hole, so you will have to pass the wire beneath that and finish the last coil. This process will secure the other wires in place. Ok guys, so now we have the core all winded, and 6 wires are getting out. 3 of these wires are the inputs and 3 are the outputs. Now you have to place the stator support inside, but not full inside yet. As you can see, it has some holes, so we need to pass those 6 wires through here. 3 wires for the input and 3 for the output. When the wires are in place, you can fully insert the stator. Then flip the core and add the other side of the stator. Also add the M4 screws in place. Now keep the wires long enough till the end. But for now you can clean the output wires and remove the insulation coat. Then we join the cables together with some solder, since this will be a Y configuration. Add the shrinking tube on top for insulation. So now the core is ready. Now we put the core aside and now we have to place the magnets. Please watch once again Christoph's video for more information about weight distribution. Even these magnets look the same, the weight and the force is not the same. You might want to measure the magnets for force and weight before placing them inside. Because imagine that all the heavy magnets are on one side. That will destabilize the motor a lot and it will vibrate or maybe even break. So mark the south and the north polarity of each magnet. When placing them inside, they must be alternating. So one magnet with south, the other with north and so on. When all the big magnets are inside, we have to place the small ones. The magnetic force of the big ones will help us to do that. If the polarity of the small magnets is not the good one, then the magnet won't stay in. So take it out, flip it and it will snap right in the slot. Now all magnets are in place in the hullback configuration. This array configuration will create a strong magnetic side and a weak one. The magnetic field will extend more due to this configuration, and we will have the strong side on the interior of the motor. Ok guys, now both the magnets and the core are ready. We place a metal color on the shaft and then insert that into the plastic color. Now fix the shaft on the outer part of the motor. Remember to tie the screw of the metal color that is fixed onto the shaft. So now we have to join the rotor with the stator. So place the stator with the core inside of the rotor onto the metal shaft. Now make sure that you have the bearings in place. Then you have to add the final part of the rotor with the big bearing. Now you can close the case and the motor should be ready. But the final part is to add another metal color on the other side, so it won't get out. So tie the screw of that as well. Now rotate the motor and make sure that the wires inside are not touching the plastic parts. Finally, we have to add some shrinking tubes to insulate the three wires. Once we do that, we add some bullet connectors to the triple phase input. And the motor now is complete. And it looks great, doesn't it? Now we have to test if this works well or not, but actually I already know that it does, from Christoph videos. So I connect a basic ESC at the input of the three phases A, B and C. I will use a 4S battery. Now slowly increase the speed and there you go. Ok, so at first, the motor didn't start by itself. It has low torque because the core is not ferromagnetic, it's just plastic. But once I helped the motor with my hand, it started spinning with no problem. Also, after I added some silicone oil to each bearing, the rotation was way smoother and the motor was able to start by its own. It can reach very high speeds but I never reached the maximum speed, because I was afraid of breaking apart, falling from the table or any other dangerous test. So for that I will need a proper testing case, that will be strong enough. 
but that in a future video. So the motor works and it seems to be quite powerful. Actually on his website this motor is rated to 600 watts, up to 30 volts, 255 rpms, 80% efficiency which for a 3D printed motor this is awesome and a lot more. I bet the efficiency of my motor is a lot lower because my core is not magnetic PLA and the rest of the parts are not that carefully done as in his videos. In a future video I'll make some tests with this motor and by that we will learn even more about brushless motors, so stay tuned for that. We will see how to measure power, the speed and all the specification of this kind of motors. If you like this video give it a like. Also consider subscribing and activate the notification bell. If you would like to support my work check my Patreon page. So thanks again and see you later guys.